Okay. Yes, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tomasz Kubasik. Uh, together with my field application engineer, Joachim Konkol, we represent a linear technology offering on uh, the um, um, Slovak market. Actually, we are responsible for a couple of countries in northern part of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Slovakia included. Uh, today, we will discuss uh, the theory uh, behind technical criteria and solutions uh, from. Uh, it's, it's not sure. Okay. Um, uh, we will be discussing the DC DC converters uh, for the input voltage that is uh, um, below or equal or higher than. Uh, the output voltage required. Hold, uh, hold on a second, I will try to share my presentation to be visible to everybody. Um, right now it should be visible. All right. Yes. Okay, so um, in in the case of uh, um, input voltage, which can be higher, equal, or lower than the required output voltage, um, a simple back or a boost converter doesn't fit. Um, the example of this kind of application is when um, we have a battery supply. Uh, when battery is charged fully, it gives you slightly uh, higher uh, output voltage uh, when the battery is going lower with the capacity it goes also lower with the uh, with the with the output voltage and if this uh, um, output uh, voltage of the battery um, is higher or lower uh, the the output uh, the output voltage of the system we need something that is converting these voltages to the required um, level. Um, we can find a lot of applications where this kind of book, back and boost converters are uh, required. But until we get into the back boost conversion, let's try to consider um, the typical back converter from the theory standpoint. You may know these pictures already um, uh, for the back converter or step-down converter. Um, when V-in is higher than V-out, we could have one switch and one diode or one switch uh, or two switches, uh, S1 and S2, which are switching um, um, one another. Um, this means that uh, the current that is flowing out of the system um, is uh, flowing through the uh, inductance, and the inductance currents, uh, um, in this case, could contain some uh, elements. For example, uh, uh, this is uh, the um, ripple current which is very much connected with the value of inductance. Um, <clears throat> let's consider another um, configuration when we want to step up the voltage level from lower to higher level. Uh, we have um, a different configuration between the switch or switches and the uh, and, uh, uh, inductor. In this case, um, um, uh, the, the output current is uh, a little bit uh, more complicated to achieve because it uh, depends on the <clears throat> uh, it depends on the uh, difference of the uh, of the voltage level between input and output, uh, but also the efficiency of the whole thing and the ripple currents. Um, it's worth to mention that uh, um, 
information uh, in the data sheets of this uh, kind of uh, configuration can uh, contain um, uh, the values that are not uh, exactly the values of the output current. Um, please have a look at the first page of our LT3957 boost flyback septical and inverting converter. Uh, in this case, we are going to have the uh, boost configuration, uh, but the information uh, with the first page shows this is a 5 amp, 40 volt switch. Does it mean that uh, we can draw exactly 5 amps on the output? Not really. Uh, if we consider, for example, 12 volts on the input, 24 volts on the outputs, and required 60 milliamp, 600 milliamps on the output, what is actually the switch of the, uh, the, the current uh, flowing through the switch? We have to take uh, the ratio between the output and the input voltage, which is two in this case. Uh, we have to consider also the efficiency, which is 95% in this case. And also we have to consider some room for the ripple current. Um, so, in fact, we will land with 1.4, 1.5 amps through the um, uh, through the switch in this case. The situation dramatically dramatically changes when we lower our input voltage, for example, to five volts. Uh, then the difference between uh, the output and the input is five times. So we have to actually multiply the output by these five times. The efficiency will be lower than shown on the picture. So the situation is even worse. Maybe in this situation, this five amps, 40 volt switch will expand, but it's really on the edge. Please remember that what is written in, on the first page of the data sheet, 5 amps, 40 switch, 40 volts switch, it, these are the parameters of the switch, not the output current itself. Okay. Now, uh, we have a couple of topologies for the situation described. Uh, depending on the transformer or non-transformer, depending on the level of power that is required, we could get to a four switch bug boost configuration. We can also use septic configuration or chuck configuration. For uh, low complexity, um, different solutions we can have also push pull, fly back, or single or uh, switch or two switch forwards converters. Let's try to discuss the SEPIC, single-ended primary inductance converter. Um, in this case, we have uh, two steps of m the first one of magnetizing the coupled inductors. And I will try to annotate it. And in the second step, uh, well, in the first step, the, the output leaves out of the energy from the output cap. And the second step, while demagnetizing um, the inductance, uh, we have the current flowing through these diodes. Uh, we can observe a lot of current pull, uh, pulses through the diodes. So, uh, with the advantages, uh, we can speak about um, uh, safety because thanks to the capacitor and the configuration between input and output, uh, we have uh, short circuit protection. Um, SAPIC is also low ripple on outputs and current limits at output on input and current limit on output. With the disadvantages, we have to um, call high ripple on the output. Let's consider the chuck converter. 
Chuck is actually um, named after the inventor of this topology, Dr. Slobodan Chuk. Uh, again, we have the couple inductors here and the capacitance um, in between uh, the input and output. Uh, the good thing is that uh, with the operation of the Chuk converter, we can expect uh, low ripple, which means also low EMI. The disadvantage of uh, uh, this uh, configuration is uh, that we um, have the inverted outputs, but uh, we have the ICs that you can directly connect to this topology even without any level shifter. We can also help you uh, to compensate the circuitry. Okay. In this case, we landed to um, the typical, the class classical bug boost configuration with four switches and single inductor in between. So we, we, we have four switches, uh, A, B, C, and D, that can operate at first in a back mode when input voltage is higher than output voltage, or uh, in the boost mode, when the input voltage is lower than output voltage. You can see in the upper configuration, we have switches A and B that creates actually the synchronous back. And uh, in the configuration down, it's a typical boost converter. What happens when the V in is almost equal to V out? We can consider the following operation when the switch A and C are on and switches B and D are open. Then the current flows uh, through the inductor and goes up. If we disconnect A and C and connect B and D, the situation is Different, the, the, the current slows down, but it's uh, going to the output. And the situation, of course, repeats periodically. So, from this point of view, we can say that uh, uh, as we have just one um, inductor, we will have uh, pretty, not, not, not so complex uh, uh, configuration. We will have low ripple voltage on the outputs and high efficiency. In the next slides, um, we will show how to handle the efficiencies also with the light loads. Um, with the disadvantages, I, uh, we have to uh, mention high ripple current on the inputs. While well, comparing two topologies, um, static and back boost, we can see the difference in size of inductor elements. The picture shows uh, more or less um, similar uh, parameters of the, of the uh, configurations. The right hand side is the typical back book and the left hand side is the static one. Not only size of the inductance matters, Let's consider now the efficiency. In fact, if we measure the efficiency of the similar configurations in terms of parameters, we can see the difference up to 10% uh, towards the classical back boost configuration. Static simply is a um, lower efficiency case. So, the conclusion is that uh, if we fight for efficiency, we could uh, really consider for the design the back boost um, configuration. As we have uh, four switches uh, available, we can play a little bit with them, uh, which uh, will turn to even higher efficiency and smooth transition between uh, 
in uh, between uh, back and boost configurations. LTC was working on different modes to improve to improve the efficiency and the output performance of this kind of configuration. Let's uh, stick to the classical operation, which you have already seen. So we have uh, this kind of operation. And if we turn to the quantity of uh, uh, quantify the, 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 the current, so the number of amps that we can draw from this configuration, one amp on the outputs, the question is, what is the current of the inductor? In fact, it will be in average around two amps. As you see, uh, the back converter, this is one amp. The boost converter, this is also one amp. Now, let's see the um, the, 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 draft, the the charts of the classic back boost um, configuration. You can see that the, when the v, v out is equal to V in, we will have approximately two amps uh, of the current flowing through the inductor. This means that uh, we have to prepare the inductor with higher uh, current of saturation, we, or we will get the lower uh, output currents, which means also the reduced efficiency. How to handle that? LTC um, provides the third mode operation, which uh, helps to avoid this disadvantage. As I said, we have four switches and we can play a little bit with them. So with a typical um, um, uh, mode with the switches A and C on, the current flows um, up. Then we switch uh, B and D and uh, open A and C. And for a moment, we switch inputs to the output through the switches A and D. Then the situation um, comes back. Of course, consider that uh, V in is almost equal to V out. So we, we can have this kind of connection. What it means for the efficiency and for the output current? Actually, um, we can slide with our um, performance through purely back and purely boost configuration, which gives us much lower sorry, much lower current through the inductor, which in turn um, um, uh, means that we will have uh, much smaller uh, inductance in the system and higher efficiency as, as well. That's right. What about the transition between book back and boost? Uh, let's consider our very popular 3789 LTC 3789 uh, controller with also four switches um, configuration. And let's uh, have a look at the efficiency graph. This is this red line here. If we have uh, the boost configuration or the back configuration, nothing strange happens. But if the, mm, the input voltage is uh, close to the output required, 12 volts, we have a smooth transition between these two stages. This is exactly the third mode operation phenomenon. Now, if we consider another way of uh, switching 
which is called continuous switching. We can play again with our switches. Uh, we can have uh, uh, connected uh, ground to ground with uh, the current flowing through the inductor before, so the, the current will stay on the same level. Now we connect A and B and disconnect B and C in order to connect V in to V out in backwards. And then uh, B and D is working uh, as a second step of back mode operation. Then again, a little bit of time when B and C are connected and the situation follows. Now, when the boost mode with continuous switching is supplied, we've got again B and C connected, then A and C, then A and D, and the situation repeats. Okay, so you can see that with this uh, uh, activity with the uh, switches, which are not classical uh, back and boost, back boost, uh, we can have uh, improved uh, performance of the chips. Um, let's see how it looks in numbers. We, um, con we try to confirm the theory with simulation examples uh, using our LT spies. For those ones who do not know or who do not use uh, this uh, software, I would recommend to download it. It's free of charge and uh, make some trials with uh, your circuitry simulations. It's really a great tool that shows you a lot of parameters that you uh, should measure afterwards uh, at the prototyping stage. But before you get to this, uh, you can do your simulations on the screen of your computer. Okay, so uh, we have chosen LT3467 SEPIC configuration and LTC3113, which is a back boost uh, converter. And we will be checking uh, input ripple currents, output ripple voltage, and the efficiency of these two solutions. Of course, we are trying to achieve uh, this uh, mm, uh, comparison with more or less the same input and output parameters. So let's consider the ripple current and um, on the input and ripple voltage on the output, first of all. Um, you see, you can see that uh, for uh, uh, the output voltage ripple, uh, if we use uncoupled or coupled inductors in the SEPIC configuration, uh, the change is not much. But if you use back boost configuration with 3113, uh, the output ripple is much lower. Right now, um, if we consider the input ripple uh, currents, uh, the coupled inductors help a lot. However, in the configuration of back boost, uh, we have higher um, uh, input ripple currents. Let's consider right now the efficiency. The red one is the back boost configuration, the blue one is the SEPIC configuration. You can see the difference between 15 and 20 percent in efficiency in this case. Um, if we consider the same graph but in uh, the load um, dimension, um, the lower the load, the closer the efficiencies between static and Backboost. This means that uh, uh, this uh, uh, efficiency goes down. Uh, how to handle that? We have another uh, possibility 
with the burst mode operation. The burst mode operation means that the converter switches for a moment until the voltage in this point gets to some predefined voltage on a single comparator. Um, this comparator shows uh, to, the, to the converter go ahead switch. But once uh, it is equal to the predefined value, it says no stop switching and the voltage uh, goes down having fed uh, from this output cut. This situation continues when the comparator goes again for the go mode and switch off when the voltage gets to the to the point. In this case we have uh, put the transition between the burst mode and the switching PWM mode. You, you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, some kind of uh, spikes in this configuration uh, because of the switching. Uh, we have also the ripple on the output and uh, this is of course uh, a pretty negative uh, element of the whole uh, thing because we increase the noise and the EMI. Unfortunately, this is the penalty that we have to pay for much higher um, uh, efficiency at the low, low, uh, light loads. Let's consider the numbers. Um, let's start with efficiency at low loads. Um, when we have uh, 10 milliamps out of the LTC 3113 in the burst mode, it's uh, still high, 83%. In the switching mode, it's 79%. So not much of the difference. But if we go down with the loads until 1 milliamp only, the burst mode is still high, 71%, while the switching mode is below 30%. Uh, it might be important for the applications when uh, we use battery as a power supply, because we can save a lot of energy spread uh, during the uh, PWM modes instead of using burst mode. So we can see the difference of the power that we can save. With the ripple at low, low, uh, low loads, um, you can see that the burst mode is uh, much higher ripple than the PWM mode, uh, even if we consider um, a little bit more low than one milliamp. As I said, uh, burst mode is uh, uh, improving the efficiency a lot, and uh, it uh, could be used also uh, as uh, um, protection of the backwards current in case of the precharge load. Okay, let's uh, summarize um, the key features of synchronous back boost converters. We have just one inductor. Uh, if we use uh, the proprietary third mode of operation, we can squeeze its size. Uh, we have smooth transition uh, between back and boost when uh, the input and output voltages are almost equal to each other. We get uh, the highest efficiency among all the um, uh, topologies that we uh, that we discussed. 
Uh, also, the controllers are in the smallest uh, um, IC size. And we have uh, some other features of, uh, of the controllers that we have in our offer, like uh, adjustable frequency, soft starts, uh, current limit, or the burst modes that we can apply. Okay, that's the theory. What about the products? Uh, we have prepared a couple of examples of the products with some applications. Um, get prepared with your ballpen and piece of paper to note the part numbers. Or you can um, contact us later on to recall the part numbers that will be discussed. Let's start with the tiny little things. The Backbook Boost Converter LTC3335 is a 50 milliamps synchronous Backbook Converter integrated with column counter. This means that the application of this uh, converter is um, pretty obvious, the battery. We can have these two functionalities, so power conversion and checking the batteries uh, stage uh, in one uh, piece of silicon, in one package, and uh, we can get the information about the battery states through I2C, um, uh, through I2C uh, outputs. Uh, the converter has got selectable output voltages between 1.8 volts and 5 volts and can produce uh, 50 milliamps. Of course, quiescent currents of this little device should be as low as possible because we have only the battery on the input. It's 618 nanoamps. For the applications, uh, we can uh, think about, for, a, for example, wireless sensors that are um, supplied with uh, the battery um, or um, this could be used also with our DAS network smart mesh application. For further information about the DAS networks, you can contact us directly. I, uh, we have also the micro module which is a full uh, power supply, including um, the inductor inside, LTM8054, that can uh, produce uh, much more output than 15 milliamps, uh, actually with uh, input of 24 volts, we can have 12 amps on the output, um, 12 uh, volts on, uh, of the output, uh, with uh, more than 5 amps. The whole thing is uh, in the BGA package very small and very efficient. We can have also the multi-chemistry charger, which uses uh, uh, four external switches just to give you flexibility on the power applied in this case. Um, we have a uh, smaller LTC3454 1 amp synchronous bug boost high current LED driver, LED driver, which is uh, used, for example, in cell phone, camera flash, or torch light. Uh, here, the inductor is outside, again, to give you uh, capability uh, with uh, different configurations but the switches are inside, so the layout is uh, more, uh, um, it's, it's easier to achieve. In the typical uh, uh, torch modes, we can achieve the efficiency above 90%. Another LED driver, LT3791, with external MOSFETs, one inductor, with some additional functionality like uh, open LED, short LED indication, 
and uh, also analog and PWM dimming. Uh, this could be used, for example, in the headlamps in our cars and running lamps in our cars. We got to um, the LT8705, which is uh, very um, efficient and uh, very flexible uh, controller. Uh, the input voltage uh, is up to 80 volts, the output voltage is also up to 80 volts, so it can handle a lot of applications. Uh, again, external uh, MOSFETs sent one uh, inductor um, outside. Uh, for the additional information about this particular controller, I would like to run right now the video that was produced by our colleagues from the US, especially Albert, um, who is speaking about four controller loops um, available with the operation of this controller. Let me change from presentation to the file I would like to run right now.
Okay. Uh, I am back in in the presentation. Hopefully, you will see that now. Okay. Just a second, I am trying to share the application. Share the application. And now? Okay. Should be visible. So you could see that Alberts uh, discussed the um, discussed the four um, loops, uh, four control loop loops of uh, uh, the input and output current and voltages. Um, thanks to these uh, full possibilities of the uh, of the LP eighty seven oh five. We can configure this as a bidirectional back boost supercap backup in this configuration. Um, so when we have the supply on the inputs, um, the system gets these 12 volts. Uh, at the same time, the supercaps are charged. Once they are charged, we can disconnect the input and uh, the energy. Uh, that are uh, that is um, mm, this part in this uh, uh, super caps are right now flowing to the to the loads. Based on this um, back boost uh, controller, we built another one, which is called LT8490 True MPPT Charger. Um, it can handle um, input from the solar panels. Uh, it uh, has got the mechanism, internal mechanism, uh, to follow the MPPT, so maximum power point of the input. And so on the output side, it has a full charger for um, lead acid or lithium batteries. In fact, this uh, kind of solution um, is just a single chip solution for a typical application when we have uh, uh, the solar panel on the inputs and the battery on the outputs and uh, can be configured in a really flexible way. As you can see, uh, you don't need to write any software because uh, the MPPT algorithm is already inside. The demo board looks like the following. Uh, we just need to connect the inputs. So solar panel, the output, the storage of the energy, and uh, LP8490 makes the job. Okay, um, I would like to add also um, um, uh, that we still work on the new um, um, ICs uh, in the area of bug boost um, conversion. For example, there is one which we do not mention as a slide on this presentation. This is called LT7812. Uh, you can go to our website and check how it works and what it is. At the end of uh, this presentation, um, we would like to share with you some uh, layout considerations for uh, back boost topology. Actually, this is valid for also for the other topologies. For example, uh, if we have the hot loop on the after in between the switches, uh, any kind of addition, uh, the inductance 
uh, parasitic inductance is, uh, is of course bad. That is why we have to keep this loop very small and uh, keep it on the single layer of, uh, of your PCB. You can see the example of placements. We've got the, uh, the cap here, the MOSFETs here, and we have to minimize this loop area. Uh, do not go through vias um, for power connection in this case. Try to stay within the same layer of uh, on, on the PCB. Uh, this will uh, minimize the critical pulsating current loop uh, on the output side. This means that we have to be as close as possible with this cap. Here is the uh, placements configuration of the uh, elements uh, with LTC uh, 3780. We've got the inductor here, the four switches here, and the hot loops here. It's uh, recommended to use the minimum four layer PCB in this case. You can also refer to application notes 136 and 139, which discusses this, uh, um, uh, this area. For the small signal traces and grounds, we also consider um, uh, the shortest way possible and uh, um, to avoid overlap between current sensing traces and other noisy traces uh, or copper areas. Um, as uh, Miriama said uh, at the very beginning of our presentation, uh, once you fill in uh, the survey after this uh, training, you will be uh, able to take part in the lottery where uh, when where we can uh, find uh, and provide to you one demo board free of charge with our bug boost converter um, once um, the winner is chosen uh, we will contact you and uh, discuss the real needs uh, of the application that uh, he or she is building so um, we can adjust the, uh, the the demo that that could be sent to the um, to the winner uh, towards the needs. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, fill in the Q and A uh, fields in the WebEx uh, uh, application. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of your day.